So uh, at this time, uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our first speaker of the evening. Um, you will recognize Jose Beauchamp as the dietitian uh, at uh, CHIO, it's a division of gastroenterology, <laughs> hepatology, you have a fan, <laughs> hepatology and nutrition. And Jose is going to speak to us this evening about uh, the topic of fiber, friend or foe. So I'm very interested in hearing what Jose has to say. And uh, if you could please join me in a warm round of applause for Jose. Good evening. I, it's nothing I hate more than having to review a low fiber diet with you and your children. Why, you may ask? Because it goes against what I learned when I was studying to become a dietitian. So to tonight I decided to ease my conscience and talk to you about the importance of fiber and how to integrate it into your children's lives. So my objectives for tonight, we'll first start off by talking about the role of fiber in IBD. What about fiber when your kids are feeling well? Is fiber a friend when you are feeling well? Is fiber still a friend when your disease is active? We're also going to look at the recommended daily intake of fiber. We're going to look at a few tips on how to increase fiber. And if we have time at the end, we'll have a little game. And at the end of the presentation, I'm convinced that you'll no longer be afraid or doubtful of integrating fiber in your children's daily diet. So let's talk about the role of fiber. Let's forget IBD for a second and talk about the role of fiber in our lives. Why is fiber so important for us? Any ideas? Pardon? Yes, it definitely regulates our bowel habits. Excellent for the gut. Yes. Anything else? What about cholesterol? What does fiber do to cholesterol? Decreases cholesterol. What does it do for blood sugar? Helps us control our blood sugar also. So those are all good things that we don't want to deprive our children of having because they have IBD. So fiber goes beyond being important to just the gut. It, it helps with the cholesterol and the sugars, as we mentioned. So, fiber is important and it's fermented by the bacteria in our intestine and this is what produces the fuel to nourish our bowel cells. So, it definitely plays a direct role into our gut. Unfortunately, there hasn't been much literature out in the last decade to demonstrate the advantages and the importance of fiber. So, if we look, there has been a few studies that have looked at the risks of Crohn's and that fruits, vegetables, nuts and grains lower the risk for Crohn's disease in children. We've also had some studies that showed that dietary fiber will be beneficial in maintaining remission in ulcerative colitis. So even though there's been a few studies in the last decade, what's important to remember is has there been any studies showing that dietary fiber increases the risk of IBD prevents the disease from going into remission, or even causes disease to be active. No, there hasn't been any literature saying these negative things about fiber. So fiber is important, and we need to integrate it into our daily intake. So I've shown you a table here. You may recognize that, that as the Canadian Food Guide, where it's showing how many servings of fruits vegetables, and grain products we need to have on a daily basis, and it's according to age. Of course, we can also get fiber from some, from some alternatives such as legumes and nuts, but it is important that we get our daily fruits and vegetable intake and that half of our grain products should be whole grains. What about fiber when the disease is active? So, if your child is tolerating fruits and vegetables, it's important that he continues to do so. He or she continues to integrate them in their diets. If they're able to tolerate high fiber foods also, it's important that they keep them in. But there will be certain instances where the foods will not be tolerated or the IBD team will prescribe a low fiber diet. But what's important to remember is the low fiber diet is only a temporary diet. And no way, again, I will repeat, that fiber will cause the disease to become active. Let's look now at the recommended, yes, you have a question. 
Well, it doesn't change the fiber content and it exactly just softens some of the fibers and the residues. No, exactly. So let's look at the recommended daily fiber intake. You'll see that there's quite a variation according to age. It starts as low as 19 grams all the way up to 38 grams for a 14 to 18 year old male. So let's take a look at how we can help achieving some of those numbers when your children are feeling well. First, we need to know how to find the fiber content on the nutrition information. The best example I can, can tell you is looking at a cereal box where it's very detailed in terms of nutrition information. So you will have the indication on fiber. If there is no mention of fiber on the nutrition fact, that means there is no fiber. It will be at zero. So if we want to compare products, especially if we're looking at a box of cereal, it's always interested, interesting to look at two types of cereal and choose the highest fiber containing cereal. If we talk about a high fiber food, it's usually above four grams per serving. Now, how do we increase our fiber into our daily diets? First of all, grain products is the easiest one to integrate. Rather than buying plain white, we could choose whole wheat grains to make sandwiches, pitas, bagels, for examples. And we can also choose to make a recipe with half of the white flour being whole wheat flour. I'm sure your children will not even notice the difference. In terms of fruits and vegetables, it's important to know that fruit juices do not have fiber. The actual fruit itself will contain the fiber. So having fresh fruit, fresh vegetables cut up and available for them at all times will also facilitate intake of fruits and vegetables. Of course, there is the legume option uh, where we can easily integrate them into soups, into stews, into casserole. Now we have a great variety of legume-based dips that we can use with fruits and vegetables. And we can also add nuts and seeds uh, if there are no allergies to salads and cereals to increase the fiber. So what I'd like to demonstrate now is the impact of a low fiber diet if we continue to do that in the long term. So if here I've set an example of the low fiber diet compared to a high fiber diet. So by easily incorporating whole wheat cereal, whole wheat bread, and adding a fruit for breakfast rather than fruit juice, we've actually increased our fiber intake from 2.8 to 15.8 grams, and that's only for breakfast. If we look at lunch, again, having a sandwich with whole wheat bread, integrating vegetables rather than a vegetable cocktail, having a vegetable or a legume-based dip, and having fruit for dessert, again, we've gone up from 2.3 to 10.6 gram at lunch. For vegetables, integrating grains such as keeping skin on potatoes or having whole wheat pasta or whole grain rice, adding vegetables and having a dessert that will have some fiber, again, we can increase our fiber from 2.8 to 6.8. So totally in that day, I went from a low fiber diet which had 8 grams of fiber for the day to a high fiber diet that has about 32 grams a day. So maybe we have time for a little game. I need my Vannas up here, Natalie and Chantal. So I hope I was able to convince you tonight that fiber is important for your children in their everyday lives. Even though we may have a temporary need for a low fiber diet, it's always important to integrate fiber back in their diets. So with having fiber, I'm sure we will keep your kids in remission for longer, and then they won't need the low fiber diet. And that will ease my conscience. Thank you very much. <laughs>